Now I've got a, uh, another 5G capable antenna for us to take a look at today. This is the uh, Panorama antenna and I came across this and they also sell it. It looks exactly the same for 3G and 4G and what I'm seeing a lot of lately is some of the uh, sellers of these um, you know especially on uh, eBay, Banggood that sort of uh, thing where they are just rebranding some of their uh, 3 and 4G antennas. I've got another one on the way which I know for definitely isn't a 5G antenna and it's rebranded as 5G capable and uh, the reason they're doing this is because uh, they then command a slightly higher price tag and without specialist equipment you could probably just uh, connect it up and think oh it's just a poor antenna but uh, it is happening and uh, I am a little bit suspect about this one because um, Panorama have been selling this uh, for some time as a 3G and 4G and this one has just uh, turned up that's now 5G capable still 3G and 4G but um, yeah I thought I'd uh, buy this just to uh, check this one out see if it really is 5G capable so let's hook this up to the network analyzer and take a quick look I don't want to spend too much time on there I just basically want to see if it is 5G and uh, also uh, I'm going to hook it up with both connections here so you can see the difference between uh, the main connection and uh, the auxiliary correct connection uh, you know because it is a MIMO antenna but because you can't separate them you're not going to take full advantage of that but uh, yeah hook both of them up so we can see waveforms of both of those and uh, yeah just to check if it is 5G capable now here we are on the test bench then and this time I've decided to measure both uh, traces at the same time so we've got the uh, auxiliary uh, connection and the main connection with the coax going to the uh, antenna and measuring both of those traces at the same time outputting it onto the network analyzer so here we are then looking at the uh, three main frequencies of uh, the cellular network then we've got uh, the lower frequencies here uh, which is uh, around 900 megahertz we've got the mid-range frequencies 18 to 2.2 gigahertz here and here is the uh, 3 gigahertz band where the 5G comes into play so if I move the cursor these are the middle bands here and we can see 1.8 gigahertz to around 2.1 gigahertz there we've got a really good response basically this antenna is going to work best in that area there but if we go over here we can see we're getting a response there around about uh, 900 megahertz 850 megahertz to just over into 1 gigahertz and we'll take a look at the 5G 3 gigahertz part of this spectrum and we're getting there 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5 so yes it is indeed a uh, 5G antenna it's not rebranded at all but uh, this is uh, I'm scanning over quite a wide range of frequencies here I'm scanning from 500 megahertz all the way up to uh, 4 gigahertz so what I'm going to do is just set it up and uh, we'll zoom in on this small area here the uh, 3 gigahertz region to take a closer look at that because this just gives you a kind of a, an average across the band basically you use a, lose a little bit of the resolution by looking at the entire band like this now here we are zoomed in on the, the 3 gigahertz uh, part of the spectrum you can see here we've got 3.1 gigahertz there going down to 3.3 3.4 gigahertz 3.6 gigahertz there so it does work in the 5G uh, it doesn't cover all of that uh, 3 gigahertz spectrum but it does work uh, quite well between uh, 3.1 and 3.6 gigahertz I'm not sure because we're not getting the uh, the traces lined up perfectly whether because this uh, design is going to be uh, with the two antennas crossed so we're getting a better signal from one of them than we are on the second but uh, the best one is the main uh, signal 
coming in uh, from the coax which is marked as main and that secondary one is marked as uh, auxiliary so you would need to connect both of these up to try and get any kind of MIMO uh, benefit from it but you're always better off having two completely separate uh, antennas for MIMO and just experiment with the distance between the two it doesn't work too well when they're so close together like this although you are getting you know a minor effect from that but you're not taking full advantage of it so yeah the uh, main uh, connection to this antenna has a uh, pretty good frequency response for that 5G but the auxiliary connection not quite so much now as you saw over on the test bench um, and it is a surprise to me to be honest it certainly does work for uh, 5G in the uh, 3 gigahertz frequency there although the main uh, antenna on, on this one the main uh, connection works a lot better than the auxiliary in that higher frequency uh, you got a much better response on the main connection rather than the auxiliary and you do see that with uh, these type of antennas although not a lot of the manufacturers actually state that you'll probably find uh, you know the uh, main connection is like a, a db or half a db better in gain than the auxiliary one but uh, yeah it's uh, certainly uh, 5g ready and 5g capable now what's interesting about this one as well is you will be hard pressed to find any mention about the gain on this antenna it's certainly it's not on the side of the box with the specifications it's not on the instructions which uh, don't really tell you a great deal anyway it uh, wasn't even in the, the money uh, sorry the seller's description who sold me this on ebay and um unlike a lot of uh, the sellers that kind of uh, embellish their gain if you will and uh, some get even uh, silly with their claims this one doesn't mention it at all and i think the reason for that is is it's an omnidirectional antenna and it's only 4 db of gain and that's 4 db of gain as an average across uh, the uh, spectrum that this works at uh, say 800 megahertz all the way up to uh, 3.6 gigahertz and the most gain is going to come from uh, that mid-range um, 1800 to 2.2 gigahertz you're probably going to have uh, say 5 db of gain there the uh, 5G, you'll be lucky if it's any more than 2 dB, I think. You'll probably get 3 dB of gain um, around 900 megahertz, 1 gigahertz. And they take that as an average over uh, the full spectrum. And uh, yeah, this is only 4 dB. So it's not the most powerful antenna in the world, but uh, it is omnidirectional. And to be fair, it's made to, to sit on uh, your desk. It's made to be portable, possibly you know even uh, classing it as a travel antenna now as for the coax it's not the worst coax i've uh, come across we've seen some really bad coax uh, on this channel with some of these cheaper antennas before uh, it's got a really nice feel to it i have to say it's kind of got a silicone soft feel to it um, it is quite rigid as well and i had to change these uh, connectors to sma and uh, it's got quite a bit of shielding on this i mean it is only thin coax but it has got quite a bit of shielding so it would hold that uh, higher frequency at five, uh, three gigahertz inside the coax quite well um you know it's it's bad probably by no means the best i mean these are made down to a price point and we've got two meters of it here and uh, you know it probably relatively it will work quite well with just the uh, two meters what you have to be careful of of course if you want to uh, oh this one's not made for outside but if you buy one of the outside ones and thinking of hooking it up uh, on the, the outside of your home you can quite easily spend uh, more than the cost of the antenna on decent coax over a long run some of these uh, antennas that you see advertised with you know 25 meters of coax are just not going to cut it especially if you're wanting to get a good 5g signal and even up into the uh, 2 gigahertz there but this doesn't look too bad at all now it took a little bit of persuasion but as you can see i've managed to get into the antenna and this uh, solder mask is very very shiny so i'll try to move it around a little bit so you get a better look at this but you can basically see 
that uh, spoon style element there that we've seen before and that uh, really increases the bandwidth over the uh, entire frequency range uh, as I've said before it's similar to using a, a thicker wire uh, in an antenna build to increase bandwidth but uh, we can see we've got the feed going in here um, that'll be to uh, match the impedance to 50 ohms you can see how they fed it in there but uh, what's really interesting about this is uh, this inductor here. I did think at first it was a resistor and I was thinking why would you put a resistor in there but it's not, it's an inductor and that's tying in the main driven element to the ground on the back side of this. I'll take it out in a moment so we can see how big the ground plane is. I'm kind of guessing it will be cut off around here. Um, and. I think why they've put that inductor there is to get the uh, 5G frequencies because remember as uh, we've shown before and discussed before um, adding an inductor or a loading coil basically they're the same thing um, can change the frequency without changing the actual physical wavelength and I think that's what they've done here they've just taken their uh, 3G 4G version of this which is a lot cheaper by the way and uh, adding an inductor so then they can class it as uh, 5G capable um, yeah I, I think that's what they've really done so basically you're paying a premium for uh, a part here that costs less than a penny and here's the back of uh, the antenna you can see it's a little bit higher than what I thought but the ground plane finishes there so all this is ground plane this is the main driven element basically it's a, an omnidirectional antenna it's not directional but you can see here where the inductor is uh, connected to the back of the ground plane from the main driven element on this side and yes i really do think all they've done with this design is stick that inductor in place to make it uh, 5g now we've seen this kind of uh, antenna before i mean it's nothing special 4 db of gain over cross uh, that wide uh, bandwidth that this antenna's got but uh, what I thought I'd do just to test uh, my assumption that all they've added is uh, this inductor here is take both of these remove the inductor from one of them just modify them so I can hook them up individually to the network analyzer and just see if removing that inductor removes um, you know the 5G part of this antenna whether it's no longer responsive at all in uh, the three gigahertz i mean remember even when we first looked at this it's not the most responsive antenna in that three gigahertz region region but uh, um you know if i'm right removing this it will be you know zero response in that three gigahertz region so that should be uh, interesting let me modify this and uh, we'll take it over to the uh, test bench and have a second look now I apologize for the uh, lighting and the glare with this uh, shiny material here. I've tried to uh, show this the best I can, but I was just about to uh, set up the test. Um, I've modified the two antennas so we can do that. But if you remember on the network analyzer, this one is the main antenna. The main antenna did better than the uh, auxiliary one. So this one's the main and this one's the auxiliary. And you can see here there's a slight difference on the uh, feed line here on the strip feed line. This one's got an indentation where it narrows slightly here and uh, this one doesn't. And also you've got uh, here this one's uh, slightly longer and uh, a little bit wider by about a millimeter but uh, longer as well. This one's a little bit more stubbier. So is this one here where this one's a little bit more narrower and uh, longer so there are differences between these two so if I was to test this as it is it wouldn't really be a fair test because as we saw at the beginning the uh, auxiliary one didn't perform quite as well in that 3 gigahertz spectrum so what I'm going to do is hook the main one up first we'll give it a scan take a look at it without the inductor in place then I'll add the inductor and take a second look just to clarify that they are just basically adding an inductor so they can call this as a 5G ready antenna. But yeah, there's slight differences. So here's the uh, test setup, just as before, but this time we're only testing one of the antennas. And it's looking quite interesting on uh, the network analyzer over there. 
So looking at the network analyzer then, we uh, have indeed got a completely different waveform. Now we've removed that inductor, we've still got a little dip around the 900 megahertz here, but uh, the really good responsive area that was uh, around 18, 1700 megahertz all the way up to 22 has shifted and we can see there that we're in 2.6 gigahertz if we go up here 2.3 gigahertz and the 3 gigahertz response has completely disappeared from this antenna altogether so that inductor completely changes uh, you know the output on the network analyzer I was just assuming that they added that inductor just to call it a uh, 5G capable antenna but uh, obviously it's not the same element that they have in their 3G 4G version of this uh, you know it's uh, it is uh, a little bit different so let me add the inductor back in and see if we get the same response that we got uh, when we first looked at this antenna so now we've put the inductor back in we're still scanning from 500 megahertz to uh, 4 gigahertz you can see completely different again we've got this lovely dip uh, come back that's uh, you know 1.8 gigahertz there all the way up to 2122 gigahertz but we've got a really nice dip now in the uh, 3 gigahertz region you see how nice that dip is compared to how it was before and uh, we've got the uh, first dip over there around about the 1 gigahertz 900 megahertz region but um, if we take a look at this dip it's uh, a lot better I mean I have got it outside of the case and we haven't got the other element that's uh, crossed behind it so that will probably make a little bit of a difference but you can see that inductor has completely changed the frequency all along this spectrum here very interesting I really didn't think an inductor would have such a, a big impact like that so very very interesting then and I have to say that my first assumptions with this antenna was wrong I uh, well I first thought that uh, they just rebranded it calling it 5g like uh, I've got one coming that most certainly has it's been uh, rebranded and it's not a 5g capable antenna but uh, this one isn't it certainly works at 5g although you know it's not going to break any uh, records but then again to be fair it is designed as a uh, travel antenna not something that you will permanently have in your home but uh, you know as you saw on that network analyzer i didn't think the inductor would make uh, that much of a bigger difference over you know such a wide area on that spectrum but uh, it certainly did and uh, as you saw when I removed it I don't think as I uh, again assumed that uh, they've just taken the elements out of uh, the original 3G 4G antenna and just stuck this inductor in place that's not what they've done this is a, a completely uh, different design obviously otherwise it wouldn't have uh, shown up on the network analyzer like it did so very very interesting um, as I said though it is a travel antenna something to be convenient uh, not something permanent I mean if you've bought this for your home and uh, you're not happy with its performance which you probably won't be to be fair I mean uh, if you want to open it up and uh, separate the elements like I have you can keep the original coax on and you can just pull it apart like so and experiment with them uh, you know as a distance between themselves because I think crossing them over like this will have an influence over the uh, overall field and uh, it did look like on the network analyzer that when we tested one on its own it did uh, look to have a much better response at uh, that three gigahertz so yeah if if you bought this and you're not happy with it um, experiment do something like that uh, just pull the coax apart and uh, mount them on your windowsill at a distance apart from each other and see if that uh, affects your uh, overall speed because remember signal strength and speed don't always go in uh, you know unison uh, especially with MIMO there's other factors to take into account you might only have two bars on your uh, signal strength but the overall speed because of the way it works can be uh, increased by just moving antennas apart from each other and playing around with that distance now I have got some uh, more powerful uh, 
antennas on the way for the cellular networks and uh, 5G as well. So hopefully uh, you'll uh, click the subscribe button and uh, keep a lookout for those videos. Um, but I hope you uh, learned something today in this video. I mean, I certainly did. I love taking things apart like this and learning from them. And uh, any comments or questions, drop them below and I will uh, do my best to answer them. And if you're interested in this sort of thing, and uh, you know you, you want some kind of advice for your setup the best place to do is uh, hop on over to Facebook to the antennas Facebook group I mean I had a few questions about this inductor and I even got help over there um, on the Facebook group myself so it's it's a very pleasant uh, little group I mean it doesn't matter how uh, silly you think your question is just ask away and uh, somebody will uh, jump in and help you but uh, if you did enjoy this video please give it a uh, thumbs up and as I said comments or questions below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one